Hello everybody. Welcome to the July home garden. It's an extremely beautiful time of the year with all the flowers blooming and showing off. This is a oriental lily. I have a collection of different colors and all of them are very beautiful. These are the miscanthus grass. After I chop them off from the base at the beginning of the season, they have done very well this year. They've thickened up and become tall as well. One thing to be very careful with the lilies are that their pollens are um, very powdery and they stain any surface they touch. So when I walk around, I have to be very careful that I do not touch the low growing flowers. The ballerina rose is giving its second flush of flowers. They're also equally beautiful and fragrant. These are the yellow oriental lilies. They grow very tall, almost six feet and higher. So it needs a strong staking as well. A beautiful combination of pink and yellow. Never thought they would look this beautiful. Below the roses, there is helenium. These are deep red color heleniums. They are actually autumn flowering ones, but they start their blooms around the end of July. I have three clumps and they, all three of them are doing really well. If you divide them, we can make more clumps. I haven't yet. This is the back of the garden with jasmines, different kinds of jasmines. The scabious black knight is overgrowing in fact. The flowers are beautiful but equally beautiful are the spent flowers. I like the shape of this uh, spent flower. I do have to prune them and deadhead them as, as well. Deadheading the flowers will trigger the plant to give me more flowers for the bees. So after a while after I finish enjoying them, I will deadhead them. This is a miniature red rose. It has only given me three flowers, three or four flowers this year. The honeysuckle is more vigorous than any other plant in my garden. It's where it needs a lot of controlling. This is another oriental lily, fully yellow with speckles of uh, in the center. They go very well with the yellow uh, uh, Achilles. The bed which is next to the shed has got loads of aliums, Achilles and lilies in the front. Achilia flower is thousands and thousands of mini flowers formed like a carpet and it it's loved by the bees now the flowers also form a good structure during the winter as seeds for the birds this is the other uh, oriental lily i have the white one with red center they're very beautiful, extremely beautiful. The flowers are tall as well and heavy. Oh, there's a yellow, white yellow one in the middle of it. They came as a mix pack, so I didn't know which one I was planting where. Um, but they are very beautiful. I love all my lilies. This is a cloud fragrant rose. The fragrance of this rose, you don't even have to go near it just go past it and you will get the perfumed smell of the flower the apple tree we've counted and there's over 100 apples on such a small plant or tree and it start i have started picking some uh, i've already picked four this particular bunch has four apples so each bunch i would just twist them and see if any apples are ready to come off and that's how I understand if the apple is ready to be harvested. So if there is a big bunch, look for the biggest apple and then 
and work your way down another lily which is already finished flowering so when they finish flowering i just snap the tips of the flower so that the plant can send all its nutrients towards bulb development so the, for the following year the bulbs will be much healthier the sedums creeping sedum it's finished its flowering early in the season season and this is the autumn joy sedum and they will start flowering later in the autumn as the name suggests now in the greenhouse look at the aubergine i'm so proud uh, with this because i've never been able to grow a proper aubergine before i got this greenhouse so there's a tiny aubergine inside that flower so there's plenty of flowers on the on both the aubergine plants and uh, they i'm hoping fingers crossed they should give me at least four or five aubergines and i'll be happy the heritage tomato they're growing very tall uh, and the roma tomatoes this is the blue bell one uh, they turn blue when the tomatoes ripen um, every couple of days i do come and inspect them for the suckers and i just snap them off in this tray i've got lola rosa and uh, some pak choy the second sowing the first sowing pak choy was too early so i learned something from it they all bolted up so i've uh, sown the second one the cucumber plant there's around 11 cucumbers across the two plants these this one is the biggest i have i don't know when to um, harvest it whether to leave it longer the celery plants which are left over from what I planted and they are not big enough to plant as well. These are all the calabrese and all the brassica family with um, January king cabbage and some kohlrabis at the end. The two rows are kohlrabis. They will all go in once the potatoes are harvested. Then the this is Roma tomato again it's all flowering but i haven't seen a lot of tomatoes on it i'm not sure why i'm feeding them every week this is a chili greenhouse so the purple variety um, this is the mild variety uh, they turn purple when they are ripe and this is the red chili uh, it's bird's eye chili i think because i got the seeds from somewhere all the chili plants are doing well I got two chilies, one which I used for making budgies and the other one is a pale yellow color pepper kind of chili. So I sowed their seeds and one has germinated. All the peppers are eat, being attacked by slugs but they are not flowering. This is Apache chili. They are supposed to be like this but I do have one which is different in it. So they are supposed to stand up and they are small whereas this uh, the other one is pointing downwards this pathway is almost covered there's some bits where you can't pass through the passion flower oh my they are so beautiful they're very popular among bees so you can always hear the buzzing sound of bees next when you stand near the passion flower the plant has grown really well even though I had done hard pruning towards the beginning of the season. The echinaceas, oh dear, they are, they are lovely, lovely, really lovely flowers. This is the first time I'm growing them. Uh, in fact, it's the second time I'm growing them and the first time they have flowered. Another oriental lily, the same type, white with red center. There are two over here which I moved from a shady spot and they're doing very well this year. The blue moon rose, it's a second flush of flowering and uh, there are quite few buds on it. Um, as you dead head them, they should flower again. So they've all flowered the second time. This is Alcamilla mollis. Since it rained for the past two days, all the flowers are heavy and it's on the it's lying on the floor these flowers are also 
very popular among bugs and bees and hoverflies. The flowers, the bright yellow ones, are new flowers and fresh flowers. And they are okay to keep because they will have nectar in them. Whereas these ones, which are brown, they are going into seed and you should remove them because Alcamilla mollis seeds really easily and it can easily cover your whole garden. The cordyline red color with the yellow flowers, an accidental pair, but it's beautiful with the flor fluorescent green leaves and the yellow flowers next to the red cordyline. This is Panicum vagatum. It is a grass. I have three of them in the garden. The geranium, open flowers of the geranium, are again bee friendly. And you can always find hoverflies and lace, lace flies in them. So there's one in here. It's harvesting all the nectar. I hope I can follow it. To another flower or they planted on another flower the seeds of these flowers are um, won't um, won't germinate at all so they can only be divided to make more they uh, the seeds are sterile they won't seed around so the, uh, I did have three of them so two are here and I moved another one to another place so that they can spread around so the pathway is almost covered see on this side towards the beginning the baskets are doing nicely all the plants are growing so there's a yellow flower on this one the trailing geraniums are flowering uh, i will be propagating this hopefully and uh, what i like is the dichark plant in this it's so beautiful it's trailing really nicely. The other one is also doing well, which has begonias in it. Oh, begonias in it. Sorry, begonias. These are the begonia. Um, and I planted three around the pond. And they have just overgrown. I'm just hoping it will cover the whole of the pond. So here, I planted one plant. And I think one, two, uh, I think I should have around 11 or 12 plants in this clump now. They can be lifted and moved easily. Uh, but it just goes to say that you plant one beginning and I've got around th 12 or 13 separate plants. F beautiful flowers and they are well worth it. This is a calla lily or zandesia lily. I like this one because it's got the white speckles just mirroring the white flowers. It's It comes up a little late in the season, but it started giving me the flowers. So the flowers are very beautiful. You, it, it, it's almost like it's a closed anthurium. Generally, the garden is in its full swing in July. They are very busy producing flowers and seeds and I would say moving towards and um, maturing. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the highlights of this month. Me, for sure, are is enjoying the garden every day. See you soon.